by adding native plants to your yard, um, you can actually play God. You can create life or you can take it away. There are plants that are very good at producing services that, that we humans need. They're going to be highly productive native plants. And when I talk about productive, I mean they're very good at supporting food webs that support a diversity of other species. And if we eliminate those organisms, we're eliminating ecosystem function. That is going to come back and bite us big time. If you're a monarch butterfly, your choices of food are milkweeds, nectar, particularly when you're migrating. But today we're, we're landscaping in a way that removes most of the milkweeds from, from our landscapes. We have 45.6 million acres of lawn. That's eight times the size of New Jersey. We're adding 500 square miles of lawn to the U.S. every year. So when we take away milkweeds, we're also taking away all the other plants that support our 4,000 species of native bees, um, all the other butterflies that we're talking about. We only had 3.6% of the monarchs around today that were here in 1976. So that's a 96% loss of monarchs. Why, why aren't all plants equal in what they can, can support? Because plants defend themselves. So the only ones that can eat them are the ones of the insects uh, and creatures out there that have been exposed to those plants for long periods of time and they've been able to evolve the adaptations required to get around those defenses. That's why native plants are better at supporting our life than our plants from, from Asia. If you plant a ginkgo in your yard, in terms of, of supporting life, it's think of it as, as being a silk tree or plastic. And if everybody does that, we've just, we've just wiped them out. It's amazing how much you could support at home if you thought about what individual plants in your yard uh, could do versus what they are doing now. The goal here is to rethink how we landscape in ways that we actually share our properties with other living things. So we either find a way to put it back into agriculture or we, we start putting them in our residential landscapes. So how many people have to participate in, in putting milkweeds in their yard in order to, to help monarchs? If you do it alone, you will still help the monarchs. It would be great if you cut the lawn that you have in half and put in the plants that are going to not just help the monarchs, but help, help all the breeding birds in your neighborhood. This, this can be something that you can do slowly and almost cost-free if you're willing to start with small plants and, and be patient, and then you can enjoy the process. If you're waiting for monarchs to adapt to corn or soybeans, they're going to go extinct long before that happens. So what we need to do is get as many people involved as, as possible, as quickly as possible. If you only have 3% three, 3 of the monarchs left, that's a dangerously low population. If you don't support life, you don't have a functional ecosystem. If you don't have a functional ecosystem, you don't have humans.